Blackbusters. <laughs> oh, what's happening, family? This is Blackbusters family, the best movie review podcast in the world. In the world, Craig. In the world. Yes, indeed. In, in the, world, the world, Craig. Craig. I'm your host, Big Ja, mm-hmm. along with my co-host. Tone is trying to tell you something. <laughs> Ooh, Tone yeah. is trying to tell you something. <laughs> Hey! Yeah, man. It was either that or Tone Avery. Tone Avery. Yeah, I I like it. Either way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like it. Um, boom. This. Let me before I get to this because this is y'all see what I got on. Um, I should have worn my purple. Man, I should I should have brought it up to you guys. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, but my wife mentioned it the last minute. You do. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not getting um, pinched on uh, St. Patty's Day. I got just enough. Right. <laughs> yeah. Just right. enough. Is it well, it's green. Yeah. But like, remember, like, you know, like if you didn't have green on on St. Right. Patty's Day pinched. in the hood, they mm-hmm. they oh, hurt yeah. you. you get, so, yeah, yeah, it's a fight. So Somebody, this, and we this ain't checks, even Irish. This checks the box. Boom. Yeah. Boom. This checks the box. Before further ado, before I get before I get mm-hmm. into this, we gotta get into this. Mm-hmm. Um, we are blessed again. We are blessed once again with the presence of Sister J. The fade. Yee. Yes, indeed. Thank you so much for pulling up again. Mm-hmm. Um, I one, hit you. One of our one of our more popular guests. Yes, really. One of the most. You get so. The last time you were here mm-hmm. was mm-hmm. Best Man. Yes, and Oof. your breakdown of and you did Brown Sugar. Did you do one or two? I yeah. wait. We did. Yeah. Yeah, we, we did. did too. We, we did, did both. Too, yeah. I and, hated Brown Sugar, and those were like I hate that you hate Brown Sugar. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. But those were like our first five episodes, right? Yeah. Like it was very early. Uh-huh. So because of what you did on those episodes, whenever there's a like a, a movie that we do that centers around multi gender issues, people mm-hmm. all be like, "Y'all should have had Jada Fade on that." You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like you know, really? y'all should you, you, you're special. Aww. You should have been. You should. So you are a a requested commodity, and I'm sure. They cannot wait to hear what you got to say about this. Well, one. that makes me happy. Yeah. I had go. fun. Y'all are fun to talk about movies with. Hey, there you go. Hey, man, I appreciate there that. We appreciate yeah. that. Mm-hmm. Um, you are special. And I, I talk to you often and we share things with each other. Um, and I watched this film that we we're doing. I said, um, it happened. We had, we were actually on the phone talking about business. Yeah. We were talking about a project that we're working on. And I remember that I had to come and, and talk about this movie. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I know I hit you last minute. Yeah. Hit you last minute, but yesterday. it made, yeah, yesterday. <laughs> but it made sense because mm-hmm. I was talking to you and I was like, duh. I should have yeah. called you a week ago. Yeah. And I, yeah. I didn't even think about, you know, everything going on with Taraji too and the new color purple. Mm-hmm. It's like, and the energy I'm coming into it with today is very much so understanding of that. Like I have a newfound, yeah. you know, Right. Understanding of what she means for sure. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Yeah. Yep. Saying, make sure you get your money. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Right, Boom. 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 And um, yeah, Taraji is in, in, in the uh, media talking that shit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, Real shit. Yeah. Real shit. And I didn't know, man. And it's heartbreaking to hear, man. It's heartbreaking to see. Um, I can imagine. I'm not surprised, but I am surprised at the. The how hard it is. Yeah, mm-hmm. I've, I I knew it's not the same. I know it's not it's not it's not equivalent to men on top of that white men. Mm-hmm. Um, but I I didn't know it was this bad. Yeah, I mean I it's, it's it is a you know it is a money making industry at a time where its power is at its most tenuous. Yeah, right. Mm-hmm. Um. And this whole time, like, I, I sometimes forget, like, especially, like, when, like, a television show that I love gets canceled, and I'm like, why are they canceling the show? The show is awesome. Because yeah. they're not in it for the entertainment. They don't care about how much I like it or maybe yeah. even how good it is. Mm-hmm. It just come down to dollars, dollars and cents. Dollars, yeah. Right? Yes. And so they found a way to extract as much value from black stories and black characters by paying them the least amount of money possible. Right. Mm-hmm. And because Hollywood is such a power industry, unfortunately, very few people have the power and authority to mm-hmm. call their own shots and, mm-hmm. and to make those type of demands. And Taraji, her, her frustration is like, 
but look at what I've done. Mm-hmm. Like, look at my resume. Yeah. She is an Oscar like, winner. Why am I fighting from zero every time? Every time. Mm-hmm. It doesn't make sense. Yeah. Uh, she said, it, it feels like I have to reprove myself. Every single every, time. Every single time. And that, that should not be the case. That's, t- mm-hmm. uh, that's just whack. Um, man. And then on another note, we're going to talk about, she's in the new movie coming out. Oh, it's so actually, it just came out. Cannot wait but, to see uh, it. I can't wait to see it. I, I want, cannot wait to I see it. I was supposed to see it today with my mom. Mm-hmm. But we booked this day to sh- to talk about these films. But it's it's going to be good that you've done the rewatch. Yeah. yeah. Especially so recently. Yeah. So you'll have an appreciation. I hear it's amazing. Very mm-hmm. true. I hear Very it's amazing. True. Yeah. But but we are doing the 80s version. The 80s version. Y'all see what I got it's, on? I got on this purple. Man, because we are watching... We watched, and we are now going to review The Color Purple. Man. 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 The Color Purple. I wish I had two hours. We don't have two hours. We have Mm -hmm. about an hour or a little less to discuss this film. Um, But this movie is just that. It's a movie. It's a story. It's a a great tale. Mm -hmm. Not even... It's just... It's just... It's hard. It's hard... One of the one of the hardest. I have never been so affected by a film in the first ten minutes of a film. Then, then the color purple. Yeah, bro. And okay. let me t- I'm, I'm gonna break it down to you. We had some talks before we got on air, but uh, let me let me just get to it real quick. Color mm-hmm. purple. Um, it's a a great film. Came out 1985. Written by Minno May Mayes or Mages or Mage mm-hmm. and Alice Walker. Based on and- Alice Walker's. Yes, based mm-hmm. on her, her novel, um, and this is directed by Brother Steven Spielberg. Steven Spielberg, yeah, he killed it. And I'm gonna keep it a hundred. Mm-hmm. As a kid mm-hmm. watching this movie, I was four years old when it came out. I didn't watch it at four. I probably watched it on like a, I, I saw it on on laser disc mm-hmm. mm-hmm. at my uncle's house when I was like seven or six, yeah. something like that. Yeah. So a couple years after it came out, um, I didn't even know that Steven Spielberg directed this film until years later. Yeah. yeah. When I got to film school, I said, Steven Spielberg? Yeah. And and this movie, this movie benefits from like two things that are like guaranteed Hollywood gold. You've got Spielberg as a director, you've got John Williams on the score. Mm-hmm. Right? And the scores, the 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 flutes, the clarinet, the music of the color purple really kind of propels it. But it's interesting because aside from some of the church scenes. There's no traditional black music or black sounds mm. in the movie, right? Like mm. you know, the movie is very much et ish, et ish. I mean, that's kind of like that's the, it's the same composer, yeah, right? So, yeah. so, so those cultural beats and sounds, and even like the even even the 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 juke joint don't sound like a true juke joint. It sound like you know, like a like a white man that's listening to some juke joint jazz mm-hmm. records and he kind yeah. of puts it in. But despite that, despite the fact that the director and um, the the composer mm-hmm. who does the score are white, they really capture the heart of a story. Yes. And I think even though this movie is definitely a blackbuster, the story of Seeley is not necessarily the story of a black woman. It's mm. the it's the story of a of a it's it's, it's the it's the story of a woman. The, the the movie is about womanhood and sisterhood and independence and all of the above. But Seely could have been anybody, right? Okay. Like you know, like you could you could recast the, the nineteen eighty five uh, color purple oh, with all saying. white people and get, get the saying. same movie. I get what you're you, saying. Does that make sense, or or am I am I at first? I, I, my I, shit? I, I, at first, I was about to, I was about to be like, "What you what are you talking about?" Yeah, is that a but? You're saying Little House on the Prairie, mm. yeah, is, is, a, is a TV show could be that could be all it could be black. color purple. And this is eight. You talking? This is 1909, mm-hmm. right? Where Celie was about 14 years old. I'm assuming that Nettie was about 12 or 13. Yeah, um, they're sisters. And they're they're growing up in Georgia, mm-hmm. right? Southern Georgia, farm Georgia, nineteen early nineteen hundreds, nineteen oh nine, and Seely is fourteen and pregnant, mm-hmm. and that that could easily let's 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 let's, let's 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 get you going. I don't I don't think that the color purple. 
people could have had any other race of characters okay. in it. Personally, only because the level that they touch on colorism is so specific to the black community. It could be said that, you know, other communities, uh, especially the Latino community, mm-hmm. they do have dark and light and colorism in their, okay. you know, system as well. But specifically in this film, I think it was very um, informative of the story, her being a black woman, yeah. a black girl initially. I mean, they call um, it out. You, you know, you're black. You're ugly you're and you're ugly a girl. And you're My daddy used yeah, to tell woman. me that every day. And not yeah. and not to be, you know, serious, but to be funny. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. to remind me, like, this is how the world sees yeah. you on some level. Um, and I think that Whoopi Goldberg, especially even, I think it goes as far as the fact that if she wasn't a dark-skinned black woman, it wouldn't have been the same film mm-hmm. at all. You know, now, so I, I think you're saying if you're talking about script wise, no, it has, it's black, mm-hmm. right? The script mm-hmm. is black for sure. The um, story too, to me. But I, I said like if, if you if you take out the colorism, if you take out the fact that, um, so I'm I'm trying to think of what's a similar type of movie. I mean, I think uh, abusive relationships where a woman is a young woman is being abused by her husband mm-hmm. and lives on the farm. But there like, are so many. There, there are so many things that impact the story in that way. If if we're thinking about like Alice Walker's initial novel mm-hmm. and we're taking that into consideration, the story she's telling is is very related to slavery and, and what we used to be before we're in this yep, position yep, where we yep, had yep. our own homes and you know, like this is an extension of slavery mm-hmm. and an extension of our existence within slavery, this story to me. So her not being black feels very like it's like how a white girl, her extension of slavery, maybe, maybe in another place, in another time. There okay. are other instances of enslaved people for sure. I get your point. But, I think so. What's interesting about this movie is that it is quarantined to like ninety eight percent black people, mm-hmm. right? We get Miss Millie a little bit later. We get the store clerk. We get the mailman. But it really is a, a movie about this black bubble, Mm -hmm. this black kind of like community. Mm -hmm. And so to that sense, what, what happens with these women is unique and it's unique to, to the black community. The story I do not think is specific for black folks. I think that's the, that's the, you know, like an abusive husband, you know, Mm -hmm. um, who is, that's, I mean, mm -hmm. like that's some of the themes are universal. Mm -hmm. The way things play themselves out, like Sophia is uniquely Mm -hmm. black, right? And the why, too. I think if you take into account the why, it's like, well, why is this particular husband Mm -hmm. abusive? Right. What has his experience been in, you know, early 1900s Mm -hmm. South? Why are the women so vulnerable, right? Like, you know, like if you think about it, Celie is a victim her entire life while simultaneously being surrounded by people, right? So it isn't until later in life that she's able to get liberation, but people just accept the plight. The difference between Celie and Sophia is Sophia was adamant against it. That's why why I really love this movie because you get – you get these three different types of women. I know I'm kind of jumping ahead a little mm-hmm. bit, but you get Celie, you get Sophia, and you get Shug, right? Mm-hmm. And they're all three unique women, right? Um, but only one is in control. Mm-hmm. Who's in control, in your opinion? Shug. How? So Sophia. See, Sophia, but see, the thing is, is that Sophia loses her freedom. Yeah, that's, right? that's 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 after her character was already expressed. She lo- yeah. she loses a sense of self, right? Mm-hmm. Like she has to refine herself, but she loses a sense of herself. Mm-hmm. Even though she's steadfast and independent, she still has to fight, right? Mm-hmm. Suge, on the other hand, is missing love, but Suge is kind of calling her own shots. Like like Suge is making decisions that are independent of what's best for others and makes decisions that are what's best for Suge. At first, mm-hmm. she yeah. was on drugs. She was coming down. She just was sick. She, she was sick. <laughs> she was and, sick. And she rocking with Mr. Ho ass. Yeah. So I yeah, so that that was she's 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 off. <laughs> I got she's yeah, off. I cannot but, wait till we yeah, dig into Suge. I cannot yeah, wait. We, we gotta dig into all three for sure. Yeah. Because, Before we even get into that, yeah. Let's let's start with this 14-year-old pregnant girl by her dad. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I, I said this earlier before we got on, on, on air. Man, um, as a kid watching this, it didn't hit the same. I thought it was dope. I thought it was good to see the actresses, Don, Danny Glover and everything. And mm-hmm. I, it was cool. Uh, Oprah Winfrey. I said, oh, it's Oprah from the TV show. She's mm-hmm. doing her thing. Yeah. But as a grown man, when the first 10 minutes had me fucked up, mm-hmm. I was 
excuse me, I was like, man, to see a, a black child with no help, no help, with no love, no love, except from another girl who's her sister mm -hmm. that has no love yeah. and no help. Yep. And I was like, damn, that's somebody's reality. Yep. It wasn't right. mine. So right now, back then, that's somebody reality. And then, then, then what broke me down, bro? I'm gonna keep it a hundred. Mm -hmm. When I heard the words, "Dear God," yeah, why is, is why what's happening to me? That fucked me up. That, I said, "Oh, that's all she had." And so, so God imagine and God and her sister, and she was asking questions like, "Why me?" Because well, she was a baby. She was. She well, didn't why even is this know happening? what was happening yeah. to her body. Why is my dad doing this? Why is my dad? Doing and then, this? Yes. and then when they took the baby, when they took Olivia. She was like, "I want her. Mm -hmm. I want." I was heartbroken, bro. Yeah. It's fucked I up. I said, oh, what, what are we doing, <laughs> yeah, man? Why do yeah. we watch this? Who, why, why? And then what my is wife. What's trauma yeah. that we're man, you know? up. It's so, and, and so real quick, I got to say this. I told her I was going to do this. My wife wanted to be on this on this podcast, yeah. on this particular episode. And um, she thought, I, I thought she was joking because I don't want her on TV. Yeah. I don't want her on camera and <laughs> like that. Right. And she doesn't really want to be on camera. Mm -hmm. But I guess she was serious when it came she to this, this. She loves this movie. And um, I see why once you watch the whole movie, but going through it, mm -hmm. It's like, I remember watching this movie as a kid. And so the idea of The Color Purple, I would say it's a classic because yeah. I remember it. It's more homage that I respect than me actually knowing the movie. So I had to rewatch this movie as an adult mm -hmm. to come give it a proper uh, review. And mm -hmm. I'm watching it in the first five to ten minutes. I'm like, bro, how am I get through this movie? Mm -hmm. yeah. I felt so terrible and I felt so... I felt so, it was, it's hard to explain my feelings, but this girl, Celie, ah, man, I wanted to catch, I wanted to save her. Mm -hmm. She did not deserve that, yeah, bro. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And then her sister, who was in a terrible decision, it was even Loki mercy, mercy at first. Mm -hmm. so in comparison. She, you know, in comparison, mm -hmm. yes. And, and then um, when I saw Danny Glover, I said, ah. Oh, this they motherfucker, man. And yeah. I'm like, why they are these mister. men so horrible? Yeah. Why are these they like how do you how do you hate so much mm -hmm. your own people? It's control. And that's where the is it control? So okay, make your point. No, no, I, I want to hear yours. I want to hear yours. So, you know, what's what's interesting is is that there's a couple of things happening. Like, A is during that time. Women are, for the most part, powerless. Right. Right? Powerless and voiceless, which, again, right. makes Sophie and Shook such interesting characters from that time. I love that. Right? Yeah. But the way that they the way that they bartered for Seeley, first with Nettie and Seeley, shows that, like, this is, this is basically merchandise. Yeah. Right? Which is your connective tissue to slavery. Mm -hmm. Right? Like, yeah. you know, they are bartering for Nettie or Seeley much the same way, you know, a white man might barter for the best slave. Tom or Buck. Right? Mm -hmm. Right. And so, you know, he goes and want Nettie. You can't have Nettie. She's too young. I tell you what, I'll give you Seeley. Right? I never looked at her. And you see the next shot, once they kind of like agree, is you could tell that a part of the deal, Mr. got Seeley and a fucking goat. And a cow, because you can see Seely kind of like with the bag and strap while also holding the goat. And that was mm -hmm. the negotiation. Mm -hmm. So essentially, she's property. She's livestock. She's Mr.'s mm -hmm. property mm -hmm. um, to, a, it, to yeah. abuse, yeah. to use. To sell. To sell. To 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 enslave. To enslave, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Um, and the thing with with Seely that's that's different than than Nettie is Seely doesn't have anything like like Seely gets her she starts to learn self respect and self love from Shug Avery, but up until that point like Seely doesn't have anything to rely on. Nah. But but God and Nettie, and then nah. once Nettie gets run out, Seely has nothing. Yeah. She got she's got she has nothing until Sugar Rice. Shug. Well. Okay. I personally, I, and I agree with a lot of what you just said. Yeah. I, I agree with a lot of what you just said for sure. But personally, I think that when it comes to Celie and Nettie's whole situation, I think the whole goal was, at least what the film felt like for me on some level, was that she always had something. She had herself. Mm -hmm. It wasn't yes. supposed to be through these mm -hmm. other yes, women. Yes, yes, I agree. And I it agree. wasn't supposed to be through... You know, resiliency and also, galore. She, I mean, resiliency. so resilient. And I think that 
we as black women shouldn't have to be resilient. That shouldn't be a requirement. Even when we think about the first 10 minutes of the film, right? We're getting the, they're laying the land out for us. This is these mm -hmm. girls' lives. How you talk about how painful that is to watch, even as yeah. a man, it's so fleeting for women. And I think even, I, I wish you you would have mm -hmm. let your wife come on the show because she can probably speak to that as well. It's like the pain that we go through is is so fleeting. There are painful things I experienced just today that I have to forget about for the sake of mm -hmm. moving on. And you kind of just learn how to do that. And they show that ability to brighten directly after all that grief in the first 10 minutes of the film. And I think that's what's so impressive about it because it it does, to me, feel like a love letter to Black women's resiliency. Yeah, yeah. Not that we need to be that, but it shows in real time, like, you can be raped in the beginning of this film and then be running with your, your sister, your best friend, holding books together, having fun. Mm -hmm five minutes later and that and that is life for a lot of people yeah. um it shouldn't be by any stretch of the imagination it, it, it's not romanticizing that and it shouldn't no nah, i think it was just it was uh, it was the truth it was realizing it, I, it yeah. was showing the reality when she came downstairs he was like silly guy here and to basically show her off for mister she came out eating an apple Mm -hmm. Yeah, she's a baby. She's, a, she's a, yeah, totally unaware. And she turned around and, and did a little face as at, at Nettie, like, mm -hmm. right? She's a kid. She has yeah. no idea. What, yeah, she has no idea what's what's about to happen to her. None. Right? She gets to Mister's house. Mister's house is a fucking mess. Yeah. The uh the kids hit her in the face with a rock with a brick with a brick. As <laughs> soon as she get you ain't my uh, mama. Uh, what's, right. Uh, ho ass Harpo. Oh, ho, ho, ho ass Harpo. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, man. And we talk about, like earlier y'all mentioned, why is there so much hatred from the men in this film? I think when you take into account, it, and it's always going to be slavery for me personally, mm -hmm, yeah. it's always going to be slavery, but we talk about generational trauma within our family structures all the time. It's easy to see it from system to system, like from my mom to their daughter to, or my father to his son. It's mm -hmm. very easy to understand that generational trauma. Mm -hmm. But in the sense of people who were genera generationally responsible for our people as a collective at one point, the violence that we witnessed and received from these people, ultimately it, it's going to have an effect on how we, we treat ourselves yeah. and the people in our households. And I feel like the hatred that we're seeing from a lot of black men in the film is stemming from the hatred that they received at the hands of of white oh yeah. yeah yeah it was, it was definitely it's rhetorical. learned behavior yeah. i mean in, in this particular film it's alluded to that the reason why mr ain't shit is because his daddy wasn't shit at right? all right and harpo was on his way to not being shit mm -hmm. but he just happened to he didn't run up to he didn't happen to fall in love with a sealy he happened to fall in love with a Sophia. They realigned him. Sophia 100% realigned him. Realigned him. 100% realigned him. Um, but yeah, I mean, like, Celie even says it herself at the dinner, like, you know, he could have been a halfway decent man because Mr., mm -hmm. despite the fact that he is hella villainous, there's a side to him. Like, you know, like the way he lights up and it's damn near giddy at the thought of Sugar Avery coming to town, right? Like, you know, there was a life that Mr. wanted for himself that he didn't have. Mm -hmm. So he's dealing with disappointment, you know what I mean, as well. Mm -hmm. Now, he's also a bully, right? Like, yeah. you know, um, but ultimately, he has an interesting kind of, like, arc. Because I was asking myself, like, does Mr. get redemption in the end? You know, like... Do you feel like he does? I, I Not don't. Not redemption. It's the least you can do, goofy-ass nigga. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's right. the least you can do. Right, yeah. Right. And honestly... It's one of those. If, if I was the house, if I was at that house and I looked across the mm -hmm. the, the the field and saw him, I, I yeah. just saw him like this. Yeah, that's all he's cool. getting from me, right? Mister, all he gets from does me. not. In Mister, does the right thing in the end, but he is not redeemed. Nah, right? He would have I'm trying to get that juju off of him. Full redemption is uh, raising the grandkids to be a politician or just pouring all his love he could. He, I don't never. I, I don't never. I don't. It's hard for me to unless you. Are, oh no, no, never mind. I mean, mm -hmm. I'm about to say some. I was about to say only. I don't give pardons to like child molesters and stuff like that. Right, right, right. right. I forgot I that the, the fuck he was. I'm you like, know what I'm yeah, yeah. Because that's like, how do you redeem a rapist? Like, how is yeah, that? Right. The only. The only way not to not not to justify it at all. At, at at that time, them times in his mind, is he's not a, like a that, child molester. Right. Because he was in love with a grown woman, mm -hmm. and he was fancying a pretty young girl that was 13, mm -hmm. but 
he wasn't out here just looking for girls like yeah. kids. Mm -hmm. So it did, it, it did not time, have it did not have that stigma on it. True, the way that it has today. I mean, it, it, like mm -hmm. in, I think, in human history, 13, 14 year olds have been married off to to men. Yeah, you know, for for at uh, this time it was not as common. At like this in time, the, in nineteen oh nine. Nineteen oh nine. If 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 we could look into it real quick to okay. see, because I don't believe at this time it was a norm for a man at his age to be chasing after a you know twelve, thirteen year old girl. Mm. I don't think it was typical. I thought at that time sixteen, seventeen was the age that most women came to you know be like married off, for example, mm. or you know. I think cause this is, that's it's not too far removed from where we are now. Yeah. So. Was it more common in that time? Because I could be wrong, but I feel like the way that they were able to make it, like, I feel like they clarified in the film where we see him riding on the horse following mm -hmm. her. When we see that scene, it's like, oh, no, this is this. They made it very clear from that scene, I think, that he was a predator. I think mm -hmm. everything else, if that scene didn't exist, we could say for the time period, this was a fairly normal event. Mm -hmm. But because they made nah, it an effort. Harpo wasn't dealing with no young girls. He wasn't. Uh, Swain, there wasn't no young girls around that juke joint. It wasn't at all. Yeah, yeah. He, 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 him, uh, Celia and Nettie's dad, and, and, and Mr. are one of the same mm -hmm. type of men. Yeah. They like young girls. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and that's probably why. Even so, even with... Um, I'll be jumping ahead a little bit, even with um, what's the baby girl name? Suge. Suge was like, mm -hmm. I, I love. So you like you like Harvey? You like uh, what, uh Mister? Yeah, mm -hmm. I you do. like what he do, but he just he's a weak. He's weak. Mm -hmm. So what's crazy to me? Which made what showed me the weakness in in, in Suge? Like Suge, mm -hmm. you you weak too. Um, well, and that's why when you brought up the three Shane, women, mm -hmm. the control. It's Sophia was in control, and that's why they showed us. Get the, she, they showed us see her get the the, the fight knocked out of her. Yeah, she Beat was out never of her. in control though. Huh? The, I think they were none of them. I think were she ever was fighting control. for control all my life. Mm -hmm. I had to fight. Mm -hmm. I don't. I don't think none of them were in control. But when I say in control, I mean like she came and went and she pleased. She said mm -hmm. what the fuck she wanted. She didn't duck. She didn't tuck her tail for no mm -hmm. one. Yeah, that's what I mean. The, 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 neither the, did Suge. Huh? But on a neither did Suge. Suge was Suge was it was we, her our first introduction to her. She was drugged out. She was when, well. The, when, the, when we first get introduced to Suge, she ducked the tail when she went to see her dad every she's, time. She's sick. The first time, the first time we see her, mm -hmm. right? She has a disease. Yeah, as she, as she, and and the thing is that she didn't have much much choice on where she ended up. Mister took her and brought her back to the crib, right? Like you know, you got to remember when when we get introduced to Suge, she's fucking out of it, right? And it's Mister that got her on the horse, bringing her in. Mm -hmm. But as she heals up, right? As she heals up, you get to understand her philosophy. On life, right? Like, you know, and she's basically like, I do what I want, you know, I make a decision. She's in, in tune with herself sexually. She makes love to men because she chooses to. She makes love to women because she chooses to. She's She's got her music. She's got a career. Her biggest issue is, is the relationship with her pop. She miss her pop. Mm -hmm. But she's got fucking audacity. Shook shows up. To, to Mr.'s house with her new husband. <laughs> right. right? Like, you know, like, we was, was in buster. the neighborhood. We, we gonna she pull like up. Weak, she like weak niggas. Yeah. She, she is, <laughs> to me, a very empowered woman that has a sense of, of self-worth and, and value. That's when we have to figure out how we want to define power mm -hmm. and empowered in particular because okay. I think these are all women choosing to operate in a system of... She's got uh, freedom. Not necessarily. I think all of them are operating under a patriarchal society and they've chosen their route. Okay. All of us as women, we have to choose a route. All right. right I'm fucking with you. Yeah. So I feel like in Suge's choice of route, she mm -hmm. was basically saying like, okay, I see how it works. I cannot get my dad's love no matter how hard I try. Who I am as a woman, how I exist in this world mm -hmm. is an affront to him. He takes it as disrespect for me to exist the mm -hmm. way that I do as a woman. I'm going to go to men who give me nothing but praise. And that's right. it. And right. they, these men are going to praise me and I will never respect them because right. I will never get the respect that I want from my own father, which his disrespect of his own daughter is stemming from a place of patriarchy. This is then we have cooking Seeley. right now. You're and cooking Seeley, right now. You see, because it because Seeley's whole thing is be quiet mm -hmm. and soft and silent and swallow all my feelings and decisions. And I'm here to just be laid on at this point. Even when they talked about making love, Seeley had no idea. She didn't have no it. 
What, was, what is that? <laughs> she she right. had no yeah. clue. Right, right, right. Because right. she didn't even understand that on some level her pleasure mattered in a sexual mm-hmm. situation, in that type of environment. So she's chosen to stay stagnant and and quiet. And then you have someone like Sophia. They're all on a different Explain end of the, the her lack of power. Her, so, lack, her, her so, lack of control. Sophia's lack of power comes in where she doesn't understand the balance of... I need to know when to be quiet and when to be loud. She chose one of the moments where she, unfortunately, because of the society we live in, because we're taking not only patriarchy, but a racist society now and placing it on someone like Sophia. So when she speaks up in that moment, talking to that woman in that store, Mm -hmm. and ends up getting her entire ass beat Mm -hmm. and dragged up and down the street, she didn't understand in that moment that there was a power even outside of what she had learned in her society. She knew when it came to Harpo, she could call some shots. And I'm not saying that she shouldn't have been able to call shots with that white woman either in the situation, how that panned no, out. Like her discretion. But her discretion was poor. Yeah. She didn't know when to be soft and when to be sweet and mm-hmm. when to be harsh and loud and clear. And I think it's unfortunate that she was even placed in that position in the first place because we shouldn't have to bow down to yeah. white people at all. And she understood that, but it got her in trouble in the end. Mm-hmm. And it should have been about, okay, what is best for me? And my children in this moment, not being so prideful and so willing to throw everything away to let this this person know they not going to fuck with you. And for me, I ride for Sophia. I'm a Sophia. I be getting beat down all the time mm-hmm. because I don't know how to shut the fuck up. But I sometimes I think it she was. Me. I think she wasn't smart at that time. She didn't. She picked the wrong battle. She did. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But as far as control, out of the three. She had the most control. You can see in this house. In her she household. Talk, in, in her household, even when she she left, she said, I'm leaving. I'm taking the kids. I'm, I'm getting mm-hmm. the fuck up out of here. And she left. And, and the way she dealt with Mr., the way she dealt with Harpo, the way she looked at see like, you a buster, homie. Mm-hmm. Give me this lemonade. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, And she didn't like the, what she was watching. Even when she came in like, in, she, in the cornfield, you mm-hmm. you told Harpo to beat me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. You know what I'm saying? I love him, but I'll kill him dead if he ever beats me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So like, well, control is is in control, especially during that time, is subjective because none, even Mister, is out of control. Mm-hmm. He's black, right? In nineteen, and that's in Georgia, why it's so beautiful you with these saying? characters because mm-hmm. you have someone like Sophia who she takes us out the house. Suge didn't take us out the house. She took us to the juke joint. Mm-hmm. That was it. We got to see her as a career woman with this, you know, all these beautiful things. Mm-hmm. And then we see Celie, who's just in the house. That's all she has. We are never going to see her outside of it. If we do, it's it's observing everyone else experiencing life. Yep, she yep. wasn't living at all. Yep, right. Then you have Sophia, who in her house, she, she running shit for mm-hmm, the most part. Mm-hmm. But guess what, black woman? When you step outside... You got to pay attention and just realize... Like even if you you shouldn't have to, but you got to in this situation mm-hmm. for the betterment in the future of you and your children. Yeah, because mm-hmm. she was like her response is she should have been like no thank you, but thank you. It's Our, interesting. This is this, this is no thank you. You guys are cooking right now, and I love it. Uh-huh. I, I I love that breakdown, and it goes down. It goes to like you're right. The way these these characters are raised. See mm-hmm. Sophia in that all my life I had to fight speech. We say it so many times that it becomes comical now. Mm-hmm. You know, right. we make fun of it. But if you listen to what she's saying, all my life, mm-hmm. my entire life, I've had to fight. She says this specific line, like, it ain't easy for a woman growing up in a house full of men. Right. right. I had to fight my uncles. I had to fight my brother. She had to fight for her what I believe, my interpretation of that, is she had to fight for her physical, her biological her freedom. Yeah. Her, you know, and so it's in her DNA to fight back. Mm-hmm. She don't have no flex. She don't have no chill because her whole life has been about being ready to fight. Mm-hmm. So when she has the first conversation with Mr., Mr. get the front on her talking that shit. No, I don't take no shit yeah. because I can't take no shit. Yeah. My whole life. So when she so when she says to Miss Millie, Hell you want to nah. be my mate? Hell nah. It ain't even that that like gets her in trouble. It's the fact when she slugged that white man, right? Like, you know, like, but that was her fight. Well, he, he that was slapped her because he, he repeated it right, the third right. time. But again, like that's in her programming. This, this ain't the first time Sophia done been slapped. Yeah. <laughs> Sophia done been slapped since she was a little girl. And she just so fired it's back. in her it's in her programming. And I think it's beautiful when you make the comparison to like Celie, whose programming was to be soft. Yeah. I think Celie's secret weapon was kindness. Mm-hmm. 
mm-hmm. right? Because it's kindness that she shows to Sophia that 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 makes a difference. The fact that damn near everybody lives with Celia at the end of the movie is, yeah. <laughs> so I think, like like she's kind of like the centerpiece. And I think it is interesting that like Suge's freedom is like I've I've never looked at it as. A response to her personal trauma. Mm-hmm. I've never it's a no. Cage. I've, I, like, I've, yeah. al- I've always looked at. I've always looked at Shug as like a free spirit, right? Like you know, but I never thought about her peacocking for love from men mm-hmm. to replace the love that that she, she never got from her dad. I, 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 I had never saw that. Mm-hmm. I had That's never. I mean, Mister. like like mm-hmm. I like I knew, but I say I never. I never even saw her as with Mister. Like she smashed Mister because. Sugar's gonna smash so she wanna smash, right? Like, you know. That's, but see, see, that's the, and this is why Alice Walker is such a profound Mm -hmm. writer, because we hear these same things to this day. Tell me it's not 1,700 different people on Instagram right now who would gladly say, well, I'm fucking him if he cheat on me, he paying my bills, so. Mm What's the issue? Mm-hmm. Like he he's still gonna pay my bills at the end of the day. He's still coming home at the end of the day. He's still da 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 da. We find a way through <laughs> cognitive dissonance to convince ourselves that things that we are wholeheartedly uncomfortable with are comfortable. Mm-hmm. Be and that's I feel Shug's whole mo. She her whole get, mo. She didn't. She never. We never saw without a dude to the end of the film. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. She was always up under somebody, and she needed that. And 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 I always looked at it as that was her choice. Nah. Right? That like that nope. like again, like I felt like I felt like when she shows up, was it Grady? Grady. Was it Grady? Uh-huh. Yeah. So I feel like when she shows up with Grady at the end, like she finally found one that she loved. Mm-hmm. But I but I almost felt like Sugar Avery was like akin to like Madonna, was akin to 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 share, you know, to these women that are like, a, you know, yeah, like sex symbol. But but I'm but I'm in control here, yeah. right? Like and you know, that's like the cage. When we it's you very think interesting. about Marilyn Monroe, right? I know I'm going on a tangent, mm-hmm. but this is really important to what you're talking I was just about. about right to, now. I was just about to bring her up because when you make yourself, when you when you participate in the patriarchy, when you make yourself someone who benefits from the male gaze, you also make yourself someone who who does not in any way, shape, or form benefit from it. Because think about how praised Marilyn Monroe was, but at the end of the day, when she died mm-hmm. from the pain she was experiencing being that sex symbol. Her body was missing for hours. Mm-hmm. Police had her body for hours. Her dead body for hours. God knows what they were doing to her. Mm-hmm. So when you make yourself, you, when you pay attention to the the love, the compliments, the appreciation, the the praise, mm-hmm. you you make yourself a victim in many ways to the the shadow side of that. Yeah. You know, when when yeah. I can let you compliment me and say how beautiful I am, I also have to be prepared for if you catch me slipping on the wrong day alone in the alley, it might be the day that you want to act on that yeah, impulse. Right. Yeah, yeah, it's mm. it's such a good point. So I think that like, I mean, shit, man, we we could do a whole ten episode series. Yeah. I mean, we could do a whole episode a on movie Seeley. on each character. A whole yes. episode. I've always wanted to on, know on Sophia. I've always wanted to know. What I want to see what thirteen year old Mister Albert Johnson looked like. Yeah, I want to see what he what his what his thirteen year old self was. His 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 daddy, like you know, like his his daddy was the one that that told him you need to get yourself a girl, you need yeah. to go get yourself a little young gal, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and you could just tell the way like the way he would shrink around his father. Yeah, his father. Right? Like, you know, his dad show up that, you know, got that cane and that talk. Mm-hmm. And Mr., who's been this big, mm-hmm. bombastic beast of a guy. And we did see 13-year-old him And he in the shrinks. Movie. Mm. He mm-hmm. shrinks. When yeah. do we see 13-year-old Mr.? Harpo. He shrinks. He shrinks, yeah. Harpo. Yeah. His son. Yeah. I can guarantee you, because look at the way yeah. that he lights yeah. up about Suge, mm-hmm. and then look at the way Harpo feels about Sophia. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And look at the way Harpo was willing to, and I don't think Harpo was simping at all. He had some very simpleton priorities at certain points throughout the film. Mm-hmm. But he loved Sophia for the he most part. He loved Sophia. Sophia was a lot, though. Sophia was a lot. And when a you talk about, in general, mm-hmm. I think Sophia was yeah. a lot. Yeah. 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 So Hell Sophia yeah. was a lot for herself. Yeah. yeah. I'm not sitting there saying, like, as big as I am, if I'm not, if I was, if I was 25 in 1930, mm-hmm. and the white boy came up to me and was like, you want to be my, you want to be my, uh, 
My such and such, I'm not gonna say hell no. Get mm-hmm. the fuck out of my face. I want to. Right. I can slap. I got a palm slap. You just got dude. that you, you gotta. You gotta know. I'm probably gonna get killed and hung, and they probably mm-hmm. gonna go rape my sister. Yeah. God forbid. Mm-hmm. Yeah. God forbid. You know what I'm saying. So let mm-hmm. me just chill, hold my tongue. Unfortunately, mm-hmm. I got to. It's yeah. You know what I'm saying. But she was willing to die on that yeah. hill. But she yeah, and she and she needed to, she to save herself from herself because she was a free spirit too. I mean, that's what <laughs> she that, has CPTSD. I mean, she, no. She, I mean, in, <laughs> in terms of in terms of the physicality, but like the way she, you know, uh, the way she came in with Buster. Like her and Buster, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. so it's just almost kind of like, like she doesn't have a, a sense of awareness of her surroundings. To show up with Buster, you know what I mean? Like, you know, at at the the after hour spot is a bold and ballsy move. Mm-hmm. But if you could just tell the way, like Sophia handled herself in public, like somebody that got hands, like she right. was, she and was, did. she was yeah. flowing. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But, but someone that didn't recognize the circumstance. It's interesting. And I want to connect the the ways that our, these three women helped each other. So we talked about like they have their, their flaws, 100%. Yeah. But I do think that like Seely gets self-confidence and self-love from Shook. For sure. 100%. For sure. Like 100%, mm-hmm. right? Um, I think that Seely gets a sense of fight from from Sophia. Mm-hmm. It. And it's the combination and, and, and of the influences mm-hmm. of 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 Suge and Sophia that help her, and then also the fact that she isn't alone in the world, right? Like you know, I think like when Celie reads those letters from Nettie, it reconnects her to it, it her. Nice, sir. or something. You know what I mean? Like, nice, sir. like what do you think it was about knowing that Nettie was alive that that sparked first, that defiance I've, in in I finally found. I finally real. I finally found the person that's the only one that ever loved me. I don't think it's that. I don't only because it's she had the love already, right? Like she knew the girl loved her. Mm-hmm. I she knew so. Well, she Celie thought Nettie knew was Nettie dead. Loved her. I th- and that's what yeah. I think. Her knowing that Nettie isn't dead to her meant oh happy endings can happen. I think for her she was like oh shit. Like, if she's alive, I can live. Yeah. I think the minute she thought that girl was dead, she she decided to die, too. Like, I, I, I know people who have had, like, I don't mm-hmm. think it was love for her on the level of, like, oh, my bestie. Mm-hmm. You know? It was like, it was almost, at least the way it felt to me. I don't know. Maybe this is my own interpretation. Just as a woman, the way I saw it, she was like... The way if I was in silly circumstances, I would have I, I would have been dead a long time ago mm-hmm. too. Because if you remember, she was saying I thought that she thought that her sisters forgot about her. Mm-hmm. She even said it like because she never got no letters. I thought she would write me, but she didn't. She didn't. Maybe she, she did. I mean, like, Maybe she like did. we hear it through so we hear it through a monologue so, where she goes, she says she write, but you know, she said only de- the line is she say only death can keep me from her. Yeah. So maybe she maybe did. she did. Oh. And, and, yeah. yeah. So <laughs> that, that killed. So maybe it, she did. Even when she yeah. was talking with Suge, and mm-hmm. she was like, "Don't nobody love me." Yeah. I, so and, and, and she, I love you. And she was. And so and you, you show is you, uh, you, you, you don't love this me. is what you think of me. Yeah. Right. She said, "Well, I would say that because I'm jealous," which makes sense. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Hurt people, hurt people. Yeah. You know what Wait, I'm saying? who said? I only said that because I'm jealous. Suge sure. said that. She said, I, I, that was some jealous talk because you was with Mr. Yeah. Mm-hmm. She was like, you like Mr.? You jealous of me because I'm with Mr.? You want to be with him? She was like, I love him, but he just he weak, but I love mm-hmm. him. Yeah. She was like, uh, you like sleeping with him? Yeah, don't yeah. you? She said, I love it. She I said, said, I love it. <laughs> she said, you don't love it? She said, don't you? She was like, uh-uh. Mm-hmm. He's just going to climb on top of me, do his business. Yeah. Do his that's business? Just, yeah. yeah you I remember see. her being, you that sound like you was in the bathroom. Yeah, that's, that's what, what it feel, feel like. like. That's what it feel like. Yeah. So, so yeah. So she I, was like, why are you talking about this? She's like, don't nobody love me. So, Seeing those letters, I think it's not just one emotion, one thought yeah, that came in her head. It was, it was what you said. It's somebody it's loves like, me. Yeah. So I can find, I can, if I can reconnect with that person that loves me, that would be, the, or this the idea of it. And then telling her, telling her about the the kids, mm-hmm. she was like, "Oh, two other people that's potential people that could love me. that could love yeah. me." You know what I'm saying? The it, family I could have a life. Yeah, yeah, I could have a life. You know what I'm saying? So that I could re, live. that re invited. She was on autopilot for these however many years. Yeah, yeah. she it wasn't gonna kill herself. She no. was she was just a a, a resilient mm-hmm. creature. Man, she wasn't that, living no more. It, she, I just think she wasn't living no more. She just gave up. Like she was yeah. really just like. 
whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Like autopilot is the perfect way to describe it. Cause she just, right. when you look at it too, like when you look at the situation she was in as the kids were getting older, the relationship with what's his face. I don't, I don't even like calling him. Yeah. You know, yeah. like I just, I hate that character call so Albert. much. Just call him Albert. Right. <laughs> Albert. <laughs> yeah. Albert. Yeah. Bitch ass nigga. He Bitch didn't, ass nigga. Yeah, yeah. She didn't, I mean, she didn't have any friends. Nah. Right. Um, they 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 bad talk the women the, the women, women you know and it wasn't she even had nobody like, looking out for her. she didn't no, even have a pet except shook she right mm-hmm. and so and before that it was Seely I mean it was Nettie it was Nettie and Nettie did that part where man when 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 um Albert excuse me pulled them apart mm-hmm. and was picking her up and taking her and the little girl was getting drugged by yeah. him mm-hmm. yeah and she was just dragging her getting drugged through the grass picked up a no, rock and threw no, it at her no no no. Yeah. I said, man, that's a. Uh, I seen a couple parodies of that of that scene, and I always thought it was hilarious. It's funny. Yeah. Looking back, I'm like, man, I would never. Even, I, could, tragic. I couldn't even. I couldn't make it. I couldn't do that scene over. It. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um. It's just. It, I, I just know my mom used to work in foster care. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? And I, I I know people who worked in the in, in, in child protective services who 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 quit their jobs because they would see that, bro. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I know I'm getting heavy, but like that's yeah. what that's that's what I be thinking about when I see stuff like that. And that's such a real thing back in 1909. Yeah. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, so I, I watched, I said the first 10 minutes was so traumatic for me because I was like, damn, like this girl has no neither one of these girls had at least one girl has the gumption to run away. She's getting kicked away. Kicked, kicked mm-hmm. She's getting right. kicked away, but she had 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 the gumption to fight Mr. Off when he tried to uh, Right, right, right. You know right. what I'm saying? So and uh, she came. She, she was like, I, I, he, could, he just couldn't keep his hands off mm-hmm. me, so I left daddy. Yeah, and then and that's how she on. got there. But so. what is that saying to young black women? Right, that right there, because that's the only other character, and we don't see her for majority of the film, mm-hmm. right? So we talked about these other three, mm-hmm. and now we have someone like Nettie, and the only thing she could do to survive was escape. That means she cannot exist within the patriarchal structure mm-hmm. as it exists where she's at. She had to go to Africa. Mm-hmm. She has two things going for her. Great point. She knows how to survive, but she's also educated. Yeah. Or the er- the early yeah. forms of education. Right. Mm-hmm. Because she's going to school. That was mm-hmm. important. Right? I- I'm going to go to school for both of us. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm going I'm going to school. This was not something that was afforded to Seely. So yeah. this so this Aside from the education that she gets from from Nettie, imagine Seeley with no formal education. Yeah, and she wouldn't got them, the, read. the months of, yeah. of, of learning how to read. Right. Mm-hmm. So it is through. Well, nobody else gonna teach. It her. is through education yeah. that I think Nettie gets some some, some empowerment. Oh, yeah. To like, I don't she, have to she, stand for. Mm-hmm. I, I don't have to be victim to my circumstance. Reading mm-hmm. Oliver Twist would do yeah. that for you. Yeah. At that time, especially mm-hmm. understanding the book mm-hmm. and knowing this is another world out there. Yeah. This uh, there's mm-hmm. more than just this. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So I'm leaving. But she learned she couldn't exist within that structure. Everyone else in the movie stays in it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They stay in it and we see what happens to them by virtue of staying in it. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And and that's I think none of them are wrong. I don't think any of oh, them nah. have failed. But it just shows like it, it's like the um um, how we talked about before with the psychology and um, uh, the best man. Mm-hmm. People have their fight, flight, freeze, or fawn response. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Celie was a fawner. That's why she was the people pleaser. That's mm-hmm. why everyone ended up living with her because she'll let you do whatever you want for yep. the most part. Yep. Mm-hmm. It's easy to exist with a person who just fawns to you yep. yeah. whenever you Goes know. The yep. flow. Sophia yeah. was the fight mm-hmm. and, and Shug was the flight. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right there. Shug was the freeze. Shug, the freeze. The only flight was Nettie. Nettie. Nettie, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Mm -hmm. The freeze response, you you isolate, you go inside yourself, you sit in it. Mm -hmm. And who had the drug addiction problem? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Shug. Shug. She was freezing. Self medicating. We we seen Shug off off the sauce once. Mm -hmm. I like to believe that Shug's issues were more medical, uh, (laughs) not the results of uh, of an addiction, because I'm a huge Shug fan. I I think I think I love (laughs) Shug. For her to be sick and then her to get better, that's not that that was that's drugs, bro. I think she she, had to, I, she went through a detox. I think so. Or I think alcoholism. So. I think it yeah. was a. Di- I mean, but I she, think was, she had two diseases. But she was she was she was smoking and drinking in the tub. Mm-hmm. Like as soon as she got right again, you know what I mean. I think that I, I think, but I think she was not on whatever addiction she was on. Yeah, she 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 still drank and still smoked. 
Yeah. But she was done but with see, that. But see, but here's what's interesting. God, this is, I mean, mm -hmm. we don't have enough time. We got to bring four parts of this because. When we talk about the new one. Yeah. We'll bring a glimpse of, we'll bring back this too. We got to do, we got to get on the webcam and do part three, four, five of this. Because yeah. what's interesting is for everything that you said, and you made some incredible, both of you guys made some incredible points. Me too. Yeah. Suge was everybody's opportunity for salvation and freedom. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's why Elevator, right? That's why... Uh, Seely wanted to leave with, with Suge. Sweet. sweet. Uh, sweet. Well, I'm going, I'm going with Suge. Wanted to leave with Suge. Squeak was so cute. Because Suge yeah. had the <laughs> ability to move. Regardless of, 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 of what was going you're on right, inside of right. Suge, mm -hmm. which is a fantastic she point. She had the transportation. Out of all of these stuff, Suge had the opportunity to get up out to of get there, up out, To leave Georgia, to, go to Tennessee. To go wherever she wanted to go, mm -hmm. which is why she had a freedom that was different or unique. Suge looked over and told Mr. what was going to happen. Yeah. I'm leaving and I'm, I'm taking, taking Seely with, with me. And it, was not, and it was not a question. She didn't ask it was Albert, information. This is what's about to happen. Right. Period. Squeak, who was with Harpo at the time, was like, well, fuck it. I'm out now too. Because she started the revolution in the house. And they, they all hopped in the car. And then <laughs> Sophia was like, oh, I'm back. I'm back. Oh, yeah. I'm back to my mm -hmm. shit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The thing about that scene, though, uh, for a lighter note, is uh, Sophia was having a uh, an episode in a fit, and nobody was aware of it mm -hmm. because her state of consciousness was jumping around. Right. You know, from was... from uh, five years I was in that cell to <laughs> to, to yeah. talking regular okay. to back to having a business. <laughs> yeah, mm -hmm. Like she yeah. was going through all the different the different emotions there. Mm -hmm. But it's a beautiful scene because I think that like at that time it's the first time that Seely stands up for herself yeah. and that epic thing like until you do, the 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 grave you plan for me is the one you're gonna rot in mm -hmm. until you do right by me mm -hmm. everything <laughs> you do is gonna crumble yeah that's that, a, that's a that's a powerful thing that's a super end yeah mm -hmm. he knew I, I i feel like mister knew he was rotting Hence him, hence him leaving, hence him taking those letters and saving them, never throwing them away. He could have burned them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He saved them for some reason. Yeah. He some some reason he didn't he didn't he didn't, he didn't read them himself. He just put them away. He tucked them away with, with yeah. next to some money, almost like he felt like something's gonna happen. I I, I no, we'll never know. This is a, a hot take. This yeah. is a more a, 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 a what if? An he, he's, yeah, I, I, something something was going on with him where he knew that he was wrong. Because I mm -hmm. yeah, and I think I think I think this brings in an interesting question because it the I, I don't have the answer to this, but it's what it's interesting to ask. Like, was Mister All bad? Right? Like, was he was he all? He was bad. Weak. He was bad. He was weak. But was he? And you know, because he kept those letters, maybe because. He was gonna give him the Sealy one day, deathbed. You know what I mean, like, like shit. you know, because because the question is why? Why would why would Mister keep those letters? I think the question is why wouldn't he give them to her? <laughs> like, well, no, no, no. we you, know why. Yeah, because he, he because wants her. Leave. He wants her broken and bruised, yeah, and mm -hmm. beaten down. Mm -hmm. When maybe when I don't have no use for her no more, mm -hmm. I you know here read these and get them out of here. I think that's more evil. No, I think that's more vindictive. Mm -hmm. I think to think to yourself. I'm going to hold this from this person until the day that likely one of them is dead mm. and then give oh, yeah. it to yeah. her at, you know, the end of her life, the end of my yeah. life. Because That's why, crazy. Why does Mr. Why? I mean, and, and I use I use make amends. I'm putting it in air quotes. Mm -hmm. But why does Mr. do the right thing at the end? Wait, What's his motivation? Sometimes he gives them to her. Hmm? Yeah. No, 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 no. He didn't. He didn't no, no, give no, no. It to I'm her. talking about. I'm talking about when Mister facilitates the, the return, the immigration of 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 Nettie mm -hmm. and and Celie's kids. Right. Why would Mister do that? Do that. He he he. He's one of two things, or maybe one of a few things. But mm -hmm. one is until you do right by me. That's him doing right by her. Yeah. A a in some way, mm -hmm. I did that um, girl wrong. Her. Her entire her majority adult yeah. adult mm -hmm. life. Shit, fourteen to now. I was wrong. I was wrong, and I think that's he was down. Everyone left him. He went back to bullshit. Mm -hmm. All the kids ago, he said, "Ain't nobody here but me." Told mm -hmm. to his daddy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he looked the kids and grown up and left. All those there ain't nobody mm -hmm. here but me. Yeah, and his father was like, "Son, you got to get you get up and clean yourself up mm -hmm. and get you a girl." Like, I don't want. Yeah, and that's like he had a girl. Yeah, 
So he don't want he wanted her back. He, or he, he wanted yeah. her back and or Sophie or and or Shug back or both. Mm-hmm. He wanted them back and they're gone. I don't want to hear this no more, Pops. Ex post facto. And then facto. he cleaned up. Yeah. You saw it. The, the house was clean. Yep. Yep. The, uh, the, 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 the porch was clean. He got and he together. was sitting there by himself just thinking. Sometimes when you sit yourself in a cell in jail mm-hmm. and you and you sit with just your thoughts and you just with you there with just you, mm-hmm. yeah. you start coming to a realization, nigga, you gotta change. When mm-hmm. when it's Harpo and Sophia in the juke joint. And Mr. Albert, for you, um, had had a little bit of drink. Show is good to see y'all like this, right? You know what I mean? Yeah. Like that particular moment is just like maybe him, like finally fighting through his own trauma mm-hmm. and going like, "This is a life I, if I wasn't so fucked up, mm-hmm. we could have had a family, right? You know, we, like we could have had something." She said, "I was, a, I would have married him yeah. if he wasn't so weak." Mm-hmm. When when he sees Celie in the in in the dress shop, and she looks out through the window and damn near freezes when she sees him, the wave that he gives her is almost like a longing. There's a longing in in his face, like yeah, I I, I miss you. Mm-hmm. I didn't know it when I was doing you mm-hmm. wrong and da, da da da. But you was an important part of my life. You made my family go a, an appreciation at the end. Right. And so I think ultimately he decides to do right by her. Yeah. That and it's as simple as that. Even even when they they came back, the family was there and Suge saw him in the fields. He mm-hmm. just yeah. went on about this day. He was working the fields by himself. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right? It's uh it's interesting. It's there's a this, prison. It's I know we prison. gotta go. Oh my god. Um there's a scene where the the the, the, the lines where Suge and and and, and, and Celia was talking and she says, I'm gonna be leaving soon, September. And she said, Tim is a good time to leave. And she was like, what's wrong with you? He was like, he beat me when you gone. Mm-hmm. She said, why? He beat me because he ain't you. Because I'm not Because I ain't you. And that, to me, I was like, sums up mister. Yeah. It, in, in some way. Mm-hmm. Like, it makes sense. Like When, when she was around, he's happy. He's, he's happy he's, as fuck. He's, he's his best self. When he, he making when breakfast. Around. Yeah. Right. Making breakfast is terrible, but he's trying to make mm-hmm. breakfast. Because, I mean, like, Suge, you got to understand, which is kind of dope about this, is Suge's a round-the-way girl. Mm-hmm. She lived up the road. Mr. Grew up with Suge. She lived up the road. Mr. Grew up with uh-huh. Suge. The church is right, you know, you know, not that far. And and Mr. says, you know, when Harpo goes, who, who you know, who that? He goes, this the woman that, that should have been Be your, your mammy. mammy. Yep. Should have yep. been your mammy. Mm-hmm. And it's interesting that, like, if, if Albert's dad isn't who he is, maybe... Albert could have been man enough to keep Suge in town, mm-hmm. to keep her from right. Avrian out there. Right. Because again, she loved to sing. She grew up in the church, mm-hmm. right? Like you know, they they could have had community, right? But it but it's all fucked up, right? <laughs> it's all it's all yeah. fucked up. And True. I think that's because there are a lot of he he Albert mm-hmm. was a deeply <laughs> insecure Very man. Insecure. Oh, absolutely, yeah. and. More often than not, deeply insecure men are so attracted to women who are beautiful and talented and mm-hmm. capable mm-hmm. and independent and virtuous. And the reason for that attraction is relatively simple. She kept a wall up. Should kept a wall up with Albert because she understood that if she let him in, if she was truly vulnerable with him, mm-hmm. he would take that as an opportunity to break her down yep. to the mm-hmm. level that he did with Celia. Yep. Yeah. And that's why he chased her and chased her mm-hmm. and chased her because the the very idea of taking a virtuous woman like Suge and destroying her mm-hmm. is the same reason. And, and in a way... Seely communicating that he beats her because she wasn't her. It, it, it's yeah. I, I, I can't even. It's just. It's wild. It's wild. It wasn't nothing about how they looked. It wasn't nothing about who Suge was. It was just you're broken already. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's you. You broke easily. And it's and it's control. Yeah. You know, like like. I've never been controlling. But I've had some partners that that were. Oh yeah, right. And I think it echoes exactly what you said. That deep insecurity. That if I let her have her own piece of the world, mm-hmm. she's gonna realize that I ain't shit. Mm-hmm. If she has the opportunity, uh, yeah. yeah. If she gets the opportunity to compare me with what I know exists out there, mm-hmm. she'll choose what's out there over me all the time. Mm-hmm. And the only way to prevent that from happening is to control her world and break her spirit. Break her spirit, mm-hmm. and and 
get her to devalue herself so that she feels as if this is the best she's ever going to have. Mm-hmm. Right. Right? Um, Suge for Seeley, I think, pulls the curtain back. Okay. So we have to do an express an express round one awards. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We have... We have to. We haven't talked about Harpo. We, we haven't. We, 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 you know, we gotta. We gotta talk about, um, you know, Suge and her and her and her and her dad. Um, yeah. There's just, you know, my man Swain. There's just so Swain. much. So much to, Swain. to talk about. We'll have to do a part two. Yeah, we have to figure sure. out a way to do yeah. a part two. Yeah, yeah. and that would be perfect because by that point we'll probably mm-hmm. have seen the the new. Yeah, I'm gonna so, that one tomorrow. So before, okay, I like that. So maybe we can make a pact mm-hmm. that we'll all see. The new movie, mm-hmm. and then come back and give ourselves you gonna more come time. You'll come back with us. To, oh yeah, because I need to see it this weekend. We yeah. got to make sure we show up. Yeah, we got to show. I'm buying two tickets. Okay. I'm going along. So I like cool. this as a plan. So before, so we won't. Do, well, we won't do MVP. We won't do none of that. We won't to do, be continued. Do none of that. We'll just kind of to be continued. But I do want to make this point again. Like there's a lot of love for Sugar Avery on on this side. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. I love the fact that. Suge knew the assignment. When she found those letters, hmm. when she when she went to the mailbox, again, didn't give a fuck about Mr.'s rules. Everybody, she, everybody know Mr.'s supposed to be I'll the only one to. I'm going to the goddamn mailbox. I'm right? expecting mm-hmm. something in the mail. Yeah. So she goes to the mailbox, she finds those the letter from Nettie and immediately springs into action. Yeah. She comes in, she grabs Celie while Celie is Come cooking. They go upstairs. She, she finds some place rooms. private, lets them read, and then is right there. Like there got to be more in this house, mm-hmm. and she's she's tearing the house up. I think that like her recognition of that, and the fact that like she knew that like after Celie got exposed to them letters, after Albert hit them letters for all them years, that Celie might fuck around and kill Mister. Right, like you know, <laughs> and, and that's, yeah, right, no, dead we, ass. Yeah, so. We gotta be a, a, yeah. a part two because that's that's weird mm-hmm. And, mm-hmm. And, and and understandable. Yeah, like she loved Mister, and, and Celie could understand why. Mm-hmm. But she, there's reasons why. Yeah. There was a Danny Glover. So he's so exceptional in my opinion because yeah. there was such a he was such a dog that that Mister is such a dog ass character. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But he, to me, in his facial expression and his demeanor, there was some type of simpleton, like in, in, not innocence, but was like a boyish energy. Oh, he was yeah. perfect. That Mister, like yeah. he did that. Mm-hmm. He, like he never was just, grew up. He never yeah. grew up. Mm-mm. And so so he was Harpo. You almost feel sorry for him. Low key. In, in a weird way. In a weird way. In a weird way. You almost feel and sorry for him. And she grew up with him. So mm-hmm. she knows yeah. that he, she knows that he's, I love him, but yeah. he's weak. Yeah. She almost came, almost she came by to check on him and seemed like, she would come, it seemed like every time she, every six months she'd yeah. come back mm-hmm. just to check on the Like, fool. you all right? You know what I'm saying? It's where let's, let's, let's get but, back to but it. But when she when she was sprinting, I don't think she was sprinting for for Albert. I think she was sprinting for Seely. Mm-hmm. I think she was trying to save Seely True. True. from what would happen if she actually killed Albert. That yeah. I don't think she was trying to yeah. save Albert's life. I mean, both can be the same yeah. in, in part and parcel. That's a good question. But but what was the trigger is, you know, she said, "Where's Seely?" Up the there about to give, up there about to yeah. shave, Mister, and she takes that beat and she's like, based upon what I know, this woman has been going through. She might he she might slit his throat. She mm-hmm. might and and man. she gets to sprinting up that up that hill. Yeah, I yeah. love the music. The the the, yeah. the, the, the line with the you know with, she, was, with the tribal she ran half a mile, yeah. bro. Yeah, she ran. She was she was running, man. She I mean, it wasn't she up was up the street. That's she like was running. Blocks. I think she was running for a few things. Yeah, Make, okay. That's One her... more point, and then we'll do it. Oh, I need to hear okay, it. okay. I need to hear it. So I think it was like you said, Seely. I don't know what's gonna happen to you if you kill this man. Right. But I think on another level, this is the only validation. True validation. True love. Even if it's it's mungled up and everything that's wrong with. Albert, mm-hmm. yeah, she she was running for her daddy at that point because oh, Mister is Mister gives her the love that her daddy a father did. would. Oh, that a father. he gonna make sure oh, nobody God. take her home when she drunk at a bar. He's he he ain't even gonna he ain't even gonna do nothing to her. He and that's not her. a that's not a big deal coming from a child rapist. 
But that's an interesting point. She was running for her daddy. That's a that is a interesting point because it he's also the only one that knows her. Okay, he he's the truly, only one that knows her. Yeah. And in some respects, her interactions with Albert in some ways mirror her interactions with her dad. Every mm-hmm. time she sees her dad, she's trying to like refresh her dad's browser on who she is now as a person. Right. 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 I was sick, but but I'm better now. Mm-hmm. Right. Like, you know, I was married now. Mm-hmm. Right. Like, you know, like you can love me now. Right. Mm-hmm. Like I've gone through whatever our beef was. I just want you to know I'm not. I fixed the, it. I fixed it. Yeah. I'm not the same person. You can finally love on me. You can finally mm-hmm. dote on me, which is I, interesting. I mean, maybe we being like two two cinema heads, mm-hmm. but when she shows up with 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 Grady, what does she tell Mister? I'm married. Mm-hmm. I'm married now. Right? Mm-hmm. Like you know, like like you can we can now have something because I'm right and I'm fixed. Very yeah. interesting. Oh so my god! So much trauma. So it's so so much so much Woo. weird. Y'all was cooking. Mental. Cooking. Yeah. Alex mental. Walker is a great <laughs> writer. Cooking, yeah. it's, we on. ain't cooking at all. It's when you have a writer like it's Alex easy. Walker. Mm-hmm. But it's re, but, re, 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 reheating it. Yeah. But why? Why yeah. I love this podcast yeah. is is like a. I've watched this movie maybe a hundred times. Oh wow! Right. Oh my god! I, you know, I grew up on this movie. Okay. I've watched this movie so many times that, uh, like most things that you watch, it's, it's damn near a comedy to me. Mm-hmm. I've seen these things like like the trauma portion is over. It's just you yeah. know the lines. I was you, so you, up. you recite the lines, but I've never broken it down quite like this mm-hmm. and talked yeah. about all these different things. So we made a pledge. So we're gonna we'll watch. Be back. We'll be back. We're gonna, gonna watch this new one. one. We're gonna watch the new one and talk about the new one and and and, and the correlated with this with the rest of this breakdown. Yeah. All right, y'all. Um, catch us next time. We we're not we're not giving no awards just yet. We're gonna wait to part two. We'll see y'all next time. Much love. Thank you, sister uh, mm-hmm. Faye. Problem. We'll see you next time as well. In purple. Mm-hmm. In purple. We'll next be in purple. Time we all gonna wear I'll purple. I'll get my purple. Boom. <laughs> yeah. I'll catch my... us next time. Love life. Be good at it or be good at it. Pew to the max. Blackbusters.